What we're going to be looking at here is this MRCRS tax depreciation versus gap book depreciation. And MRCRS stands for the Modified Accelerated Cost Recovery System. And that's a requirement here of the internal in the United States Internal Revenue Service here when companies are depreciating their assets here for tax purposes here. And what we're going to be looking at here is what's the net effect on taxable income here in comparing our MRCRS tax depreciation versus gap book depreciation. And we'll just be going through a simple example here. So we have an acquisition date on a piece of equipment here of 1120X1. And our fiscal year here for the company runs from January 1st through December 31st here. So we don't have any inter or partial period allocation here for any depreciation. We have an equipment cost here of $200,000, estimated useful life here, seven years here for gap, and the estimated salvage value is 32,000 on this equipment here. And uh, make a point here, that's for gap here, but for this MRCRS, the salvage value is always zero here. What they do is they depreciate the entire equipment cost here down to zero versus gap only depreciates the equipment cost less its salvage value uh, amount here. And then um, um, this MACRS ha defines a class life here of five years on this equipment that we purchased here uh, versus uh, gap here they use the estimated useful life here of seven years. And then what we're going to be just looking at here is this gap, the, our gap method straight line 200% here declining balance or double declining balance and then the sum of years digits here. And then on this again for example we're going to have a disposal value on this piece of equipment here at after the seven years of depreciation here for gap its disposal value here is $22,000. Okay but before we get into our looking at our depreciable amounts here just to make a point here when we're using this uh, MRCRS system we have to refer to tax tables that the IRS puts out here and uh, what they would have here uh, again our property class in this case is just five years here life on that equipment it's defined it here and then the method that we're going to be using here is just a declining balance and then we have a convention here uh, it's going to be mid-year or half year convention here so we have to refer to their tax table for the property classes here to method and the convention here that the IRS puts out okay let's look at our example here and all we're going to be doing here is depre uh, comparing the depreciation expense for this MRCRS. Again, the half-year convention versus these various methods here. And we're going to start out with our straight line here, uh, gap straight line here, depreciation expense shown here. And this is for our book purposes here. And then the um, this makers is for our tax purposes. And what we're going to be looking at here for our tax purposes using this makers, again, we depreciate it down to the uh, total amount here, the cost of the equipment, 200 thousand dollars in this case and then for gap or our book purposes we only depreciate it down to the uh, cost here less its salvage value in this case it's hundred and sixty eight thousand dollars so just looking at our comparison here our book versus our tax here for the MRCRS we're going to have a greater amount here of depreciation in our first years here one two and three you can just see the comparison here by sixteen thousand forty thousand and fourteen thousand four hundred so our for tax purposes purposes here we have greater depreciation and that would re be reducing our net income here and then in the later years here you can see that they um, for tax purposes here or for makers here we have a lesser amount of depreciation here versus our book depreciation but then when we get down to our total amount our when we depreciate them down here uh, for the tax purposes, we actually depreciate that extra $32,000 here to $200,000 versus the $168,000. So you can see the idea here, how, how the depreciation affects your net income here. Okay, now let's go and let's look at the next case here, the 200% declining balance here versus our tax depreciation. Again, I've got them calculated out here for the uh, the 200 percent declining balance shown here make the comparison so uh, for our tax purposes here we actually have for the first year uh, first year here less depreciation by seventeen thousand hundred and forty two dollars here for tax purposes but in the next years here we have greater tax depreciation here versus uh, our declining balance book depreciation and then again, overall here, we have $32,000 worth of more depreciation for this maker's tax here versus our book amount. So you can see 
the comparison here. Okay, next, just going down to our last, uh, comparing our sum of years digits here with our tax depreciation. Again, comparison here shown here for the maker's tax we have for the first year here, actually $2,000 less here with the makers here, but then the years uh, uh, two and three here, we have more depreciation here with the maker system. And then as you can see here, we have varying amounts here less. In the fourth year here, a whole lot more. In the fifth year here for tax depreciation, and then less here in the sixth and seventh year here for tax depreciation. Again, um, thirty-two thousand dollars more depreciation for tax purposes here. So we've made the comparison here. We just looked just by numbers here to see how they compare. And you'd have to do that here if you're going to do any uh, problem solving. Determine, you have to determine your depreciation method that you're using for book purposes and then compare it to uh, depreciation uh, expense here that you calculate for tax. And remember, tax uh, depreciation comes off their depreciation tables or the amount that they allot here, the IRS allots per year here for depreciation. Depending on the method you're using here and then the convention method and then your property class. So let's just go and sum this up here. So the difference uh, occurs for the following reasons here. Again, number one here, different depreciation methods here, tax versus our book methods here, and two, the maker's half-year convention we used here for our tax purposes, and then three here, the estimated useful life and the tax life are different. Estimated useful life for book purposes or gap here was seven years. Our tax life here, uh, defined by the IRS here, was for five years for the property class here. And then again, the maker's tax system ignores the salvage value. So our, for our book purposes uh, we deducted the salvage value from the cost but for our tax purposes we depreciated the total amount down here uh, to zero here uh, there was it ignored the salvage value so next we're going to look at the, the effect here that it has on our net income based on the disposal here of this equipment Okay, now let's conclude our comparison here. Now the net effect here on taxable income here is the same using our MACRS here, tax uh, depreciation versus our gap depreciation. And we'll look at it here from our 20X1, our acquisition date here through our 20X8 here, disposal date here. So first looking at our uh, t a de a tax depreciation here. Uh, using our makers here, we actually gonna have a gain here uh, which is a taxable here, and that's based on our disposal here. The disposal value of this equipment here was $22,000, so we're going to recognize it or credit as a gain here on our income statement. And then again, our depreciation expense here for tax purposes, our total depreciation expense was $200,000. So our net effect here using our MACRS system here on our taxable income, we have our $200,000 depreciation expense here, less our, our gain here of $22,000 gives us a net uh, reduction of our taxable income here of $178,000. And that again here is for tax purposes. Now looking at our book for our book purposes here and then using gap here, again we just look at our straight line here. So we have a loss here on our income statement and that is uh, based here on our disposal value here was $22,000 less our book value here or our salvage value here of $32,000 gives us a loss of $10,000. And then uh, our depreciation expense here, again, it, all methods were the same here. Some of your digits or declining balance or book value or the um, straight line here. Our depreciation would have been $168,000. So taking our net amount here, you have our gap, our net effect here on taxable income, the $168,000 depreciation here plus our $10,000 loss here gives us a total amount here of $178,000. Uh, that would be our reduction here to net income. And you can see comparing the two methods here um, our t for our tax purpose, 178,000 versus our book purpose here, 178,000 based on our, from our acquisition through our disposal here of the equipment. Okay, now we want to make this point here. Even though the net effects here are equal in amount, the deferral of the income tax payments under the MRCRS here from the early in the, in the life of the asset here to the later life is desirable. And what we mean by that here, so um, 
for the MRCRS here, remember we had, uh, and just again, we're looking at this straight line method here. It varies depending on uh, if you're using declining balance or the uh, sum of years digits here. But for our straight line, that's pretty evident here. You, uh, we have for tax purposes here, we have greater depreciation here in the earlier years here than in the later years here. And this is desirable usually by corporations when they're looking at that here. Okay, just to summarize here, the different amounts of depreciation for income tax reporting and financial gap reporting in each year are a matter of timing and a result of temporary differences which require interperiod tax allocation here, which is a separate issue here. So just going back here, temporary differences, but nonetheless here with the tax depreciation method we had greater depreciation expense here in the earlier years, reducing our net income here for these earlier years, and that's desirable by most companies here. Okay, now let's just go up here and make one other point here. Now the tax versus book depreciation. GAP requires companies to allocate the cost of the depreciable assets to the expense over the expected useful life of the asset in a systematic and rational manner here, whereas tax laws differ from GAAP in that tax revenue is raised in an equitable manner here. Now companies must use the GAAP for financial per reporting here to reflect economic substance of the transactions to help predict amounts of the timing and uncertainty of future cash flows. Oh, well, we've got a fancy definition here, but uh, the point is here, when you're for book purposes here, you're going to use the gap depreciation methods. And then for your tax purposes for paying taxes here, uh, you have to use the tax depreciation methods or that MACRS system.